My name is Lola Shonei, and I'm a writer, a poet, a publisher, a festival organizer. Today I'll be taking the creative writing and publishing masterclass. This is Dang Masterclass. Sometimes it feels like there's a, a swarm of bees inside me and, um, and I have this urge to express myself. I can't sing anymore. I used to when I was younger, but I can still write. And I find that that's really therapeutic like to be able to express my thoughts and my ideas in writing. Um, my friends also say I'm a bit of a storyteller. So when I get into that mode also, I want to maybe tell a story in the most exciting way possible. The secret lives of Baba Segi's wives I describe as um, the gift that keeps on giving. When the book first came out, um, I remember my husband saying that he thought it was going to be a slow burn. That is to say that um, it might not have that explosive kind of success that every writer desires at the very beginning. Um, I, I think he was just trying to manage my expectations. Um, but. It's been wonderful, um, especially the fact that it's now being presented and showcased in so many different art forms. So you've got the one woman show that's traveling the world at the moment. There's uh, somebody in Austria has created the graphic novel of the book. Um, the play has just come out in England. Um, so it's been wonderful. In terms of how it's changed my writing style, um, every time I have to read portions of the novel, I sometimes see things that I could have written differently, which I think um, happens to all writers. You work so hard to create the perfect sentence, the perfect paragraph, um, but it's only perfect for maybe six months. So what it's done to me, I guess, is um, may, it, it's put me in a situation where when I write, I'm not in a hurry to publish anything. I'm never in a hurry. Um, and I don't like short deadlines when it comes to writing because I really like to take my time. I like to have the opportunity to go back over what I've written. So sometimes, you know, the shortest thing can take me six months, but it doesn't bother me because this isn't a, a race. It's not a competition, and I'm really not in competition with, with um, other writers at all. You write the book and you send it to your agent. Your agent reads it. Your agent sends you his or her ideas. You go back and you start rewriting the novel. And when you finally do have a publisher, and I was very lucky because I, I've got two agents, but I also ended up with two publishers, a UK publisher and a, and a US publisher. So it was really nice, and a Nigerian publisher, actually. So I had three eyes looking at the text and giving me ideas and telling me things that they thought I should look at again, So, which was a wonderful process. But even after um, you get all that feedback and you write, don't think that's the end. You find, and you might find, that you have to go back to the text at least 20 times to read it from beginning to end and to keep on correcting mistakes. Um, and just things might jump out at you. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes people point them out to you. 
Um, for instance, I mean, when I was when I when I wrote my um, that particular novel, Baba Segi, I remember my my husband saying to me, um, "There's so many fucks in this book," um, and I thought to myself, "What do you mean? No, there aren't." You know, and I was reading it again from beginning, and and he said, "Count them. Use your find and." you know, the, the, that in your tools and I, on Microsoft. So I checked and I found out that there were about 12. And I said, 12 out of 80,000 words, that is not a lot. And I remember him telling me that, well, what you don't want is for people to focus solely on that, because that's how some people who were maybe slightly prudish, that's what will jump out at them. So I reduced the number to five which I thought was very good of me. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, so it's different things like that that you'll get, different comments from different people. And then you, as the author, you decide what you want to take on board, what you want to insist on, and what you want to change. So for instance, um, I really wanted the, the secret lives of Baba Segi's wives, given that the characters were Yoruba, I wanted them to sound Yoruba, even though I was writing in English. So that was very important to me. And sometimes um, you've got to be careful with your proverbs, because for instance, a proverb like if you just translated that directly into English and say, okay, the white hen doesn't realize that it's reached maturity. Anyone who doesn't speak Yoruba who reads that might think that you have a problem because it just simply doesn't mean anything. So what you then have to do is almost rewrite the proverb, but make sure you're providing context so that it's clear to whoever's reading it. And people often talking, talk about writing for a Western audience. Just as a writer on a personal level, when I'm thinking about my audiences, I'm seeing Africans, I'm seeing Nigerians, I'm seeing a lot of black faces. Um, and so it's not so much trying to rewrite your work to suit a Western audience. Sometimes I'm just thinking of non Yoruba audiences um, across our beautiful continent. Does a writer um, have the privilege of deciding when the work is done? One thing I think is important is that when you're writing a book, um, the moment that a publisher actually acquires the novel and, um, and the published publisher decides that they're going to publish it, it's almost like a joint ownership. So whereas, especially when you're starting out, you know, it's your little baby, your little piece of work, um, and you do have some input into, you know, how it, how it reads and some things that are really critical to you as the writer, but the publisher also has a bit of a say and they will throw little things up at you and say, look, you know, have you thought of doing it this way? But when at that, that bit, that, that period when um, they decide, w w when it has to be decided on when it is that the manuscript actually goes to press, um, I think that has a lot to do with the publisher because don't forget that a lot of the time there's a timeline, um, they're working with sometimes quite a small window during which they've decided that's when they're going to print your book. So you have a period leading up to that, that you would have been, um, the expectation is that you would have spent all that time working um, on your book. So you kind of take the decision together. But I have to say that um, at a certain point, even as the writer, you are utterly and completely and absolutely bored of your own work because you've had to read it over and over and over again. Um, so it's just one thing to, to bear in mind. So quite early on, you'll be like, I'm done, please 
take this book from me, you know? But the, when the publishers tell you there's more work to be done here, 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 what can you do? You go back and you complete the, the job at hand.